Afternoon, ladies and gents. Uh, Simon Brown here. So today will be about 30 minutes, including questions. I've got three simple concepts which I want to throw out there to, 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 in short, I suppose, improve trading profitability. And I stress two points. We're talking trading, uh, and I stress the improve. And it really is looking at the margins. But initially, first off, obviously, there are some assumptions. So let's first hit those assumptions. This is based on classic trend trading techniques. This is the idea that you are trading the trend uh, and that you're not doing swing trading, you're not doing breakout, you're looking to catch the trends. And part of trading the trend is that you've got to catch every move that may become a trend, which means a lot of false trades, a lot of trades that you jump into and they simply don't ever become the trend. So it, it's that point of we get a lot of false trades. Can we try and tweak it somehow that perhaps we get a few less and we get a few slightly better quality in a sense? So it's about catching every trade and then it's about riding as long as possible. When you're in that trade, you want that trade, you want to stay in that trade for literally as long as you can when it goes. Because in truth, I mean, you know, they're trends, but I mean, how many? If we look at the top 40, we've had we've had maybe three this year. A small up at the beginning of the year, a small down into sort of February, March, and then a, a nice rally from uh, sort of April into June, and then sideways, and then more recently, the last week or 10 days, we've been going down. So you want to be on every bus. And I've looked at ways of using ADXs and indicators and oscillators to, to, to tell you this is the real one. Short version, none work. So it's a case of, okay, we go back, we keep it simple, and we just make sure we get on absolutely every bus. The system I'm using for today, and that's not massively relevant, but I'm using my lazy Aussie system. There's a short URL there if you want to go dig more information around that system. Obviously, I need a system to talk around. This is built into the rules of that system, so those who know it will recognize the characteristics of what I'm talking about. So here are the, the three components. First part, uh, simply enough, single trigger for entry and exit. In other words, you get in and out on the same trigger. And what that means, and I'll show you some visuals in a moment, is that you're either in the trend or you're waiting for the trend. You're not, the trend is happening, but you're not in it. So when the trend is there and happening, you're going to be in it. A two-step entry process, uh, this reduces number of trades, makes your trades more frankly, because you reduces your, your, your number of losing trades. And we'll touch on that. Reduces trades overall, but of course, the losing trades in particular. And when to action a stop loss trigger, touch or close. I've touched on this before. We'll go into a whole lot more detail on that. So those are the three points. If we dig into them, a single entry exit. So it's to catch every trend, either in a, tra in a, in a, in a trade or waiting. So you either, the market is not going anywhere, so you're waiting, or the market is going in a trend might be a false one eventually, but you're in it. So you don't get left behind, particularly after being stopped out. So it does take some profits, and it is system dependent, but let me show you what I mean in a sense. Okay, doesn't work with indicators and oscillators. It's got to be using moving averages. Now, I use EMAs, whether you use SMAs, WMAs, whichever, that, that's less important. The point is that indicators and oscillators really are going to be for your, your, your breakouts, your swing trading and the like. And in truth, I'm just not a fan of either. I, I, you know, anything you get in a chart that isn't price is derivative of price. You've just run it through a mathematical formula. And, and I say, therefore, where is the benefit of that? So MAs, moving averages, are your simplest mathematical formulas, hence closest to price, for the, you know, least derivative of price, hence what I prefer most. And some folks will say trend lines, uh, sure, my problem with trend lines is I find them too, too situation specific. If I give everyone in this webcast a, a, a chart and say, draw me your, your support and resistance and do it across these highs and lows. Uh, so I really, you know, sort of like coach you where to draw it. You're going to come up with a different line for everybody. So what am I looking at here? So he has a, a, a lazy system. It's from earlier this year. This is the, the beginning of the year into February and then the final rally. And the green line is my single entry exit. I enter on a break above the green line and I exit when we come back down. Now, my first picture of always, this is the lazy system. The trend is up. My blue is above the red, which is my 30 above my 60 EMAs. So I'm taking longs only for this entire image that we're looking at here. So that is a given. We take those out of the equation and we say, well, brilliant. So now we're only focusing on the green one. 
So let's go right down here to the bottom down here. Let me get some color. You can see down there is an entry. So I get in at that one at that point there and I run and I think I didn't get stopped there. So there's my stop trade. But you see what happens as soon as I get stopped. As soon as I get stopped, I'm now back waiting again. Whereas if I took it a target, and I do sell some at targets, 1,500 and 3,000. So I, I don't know what the numbers are, but maybe I sold some there. Maybe I sold some there, let's say, for example. That's neither here nor there. The bigger point is, let's say that uh, something happens and you got stopped on this pullback here. Now, in truth, it's neither here nor there in the equation. But now you don't know if you, you know, the trend is going and you're out. You didn't get another signal. Let's go to another one here. So here again, there's my trigger. I enter at that point and I get stopped up here. And then again, I enter at that point and I get stopped. But this is the trade I really want to look at. So let me clear all of those. So there's my entry candle. Now I'm in. There is my exit candle. That made, if it's the trade I think we're looking at, made 1,800 points per contract. And I'm pretty sure that's it. That was the sort of April to June trade. 1,800 points per contract. I sold a third at, at 1,500, uh, and the rest then got taken on stop when we hit there. But at points here, there could have been, and it's not extreme, but I mean, at this point here, per chance, you get stopped out. And you're only halfway up your trade, and you're getting stopped out. So and it depends what sort of a stop you, you, you're using. But now you're out of the trade. And the trend is continuing without you. You've made, you, you haven't maximized your profits in any sense. So what I'm saying is that at this point here, when we came back down, now I'm waiting again for another trade. Because if I'm just using a normal stop loss, I get stopped while the trend is continuing. And then I'm left and sitting on the sidelines and I'm not maximizing. And because this type of trading system, a, trend, a classic trend-based system is going to give you a lot of losing trades. They're going to be small, and a bunch of winning trades also going to be small. When you get that big one, you've got to maximize it. So subsequent to that trade where I made 1,800 points profit, I've lost about 800, maybe 1,000 points uh, profit, uh, of, of points in a market that's been going sideways on me. And that's fine because I made 1,800. So I'm nicely ahead for the, for, for, for the year. And in fact, I also had this trade down here, uh, which generated some in that trade there, which generated some. But let's forget those two for now. Let's just focus on this one. Subsequent to this, I've, I've given back about half of my profit. If I'd got stopped halfway up at that point, I'd be at break even. So yes, it would have been nice if we could have exited at that point. Never happens. You're never going to call the tops. But it's a case of using that same line, in my case, a 15 exponential moving average for my entry and for my exit. It means that I'm either in that trend or there isn't currently a defined trend and therefore I'm not in it. So then going on to a two-step entry process. And I've, I've used this for, for a number of years. And what we're basically saying here is my trigger is the MA cross. Confirmation is direction continuing. And what I'm doing is I'm trying to build the wind at my back. And this vaguely comes from Alexander Elder. Uh, and I th I, one of his books, I forget which one, where he uses a slightly different approach where he would start, for example, in a weekly chart. And if he's got a strong buy in the weekly chart, he drops to the daily. And when he gets a strong buy in the daily with the weekly still in the buy zone, he drops to the hourly. And when he gets a strong buy in the hourly with the daily and the weekly still in the buy zone, then he enters. Three-step end system. I'm using a two-step system. What I'm basically saying is that if it says buy, I want to buy on a green day. I don't want to buy on a red day. That, that makes complete no sense. If you're going long, you're saying this market's going up. But if the first day that you get into the trade, it goes down, well, you've got to say your long trade is, well, it's not working. On day one, it's not working. So it also helps reduce number of trades, especially in a sideways market, and it builds that wind at your back. I'm constantly looking for those little things, and they are. It's a tiny bit here and a tiny bit there. I'm looking for those little things that improve my profitability a little bit here, a little bit there, and they add up. And even together, they might not be massive, but over a trading career, they're absolutely massive. So let's jump to picture. <clears throat> this is a top 40 going sideways. Again, my trend, except for the last bit at the end down here, my, my blue is above red, so my trend is up. My 15 is the trigger line. So you can see what I've got here is the, the red arrows. So this green bar here gives me a trigger, but I, want, I only go long on the next green day. 
I get a red day, I get a red day. We're now below my 15, so my trigger has failed. So the red arrows are where I get a trigger, but no confirmation. The green arrows, I get a trigger. So there's my trigger, there's my confirmation. Two days later, stopped out on that candle. There's my trigger, there's my confirmation. Two days later, stopped out on that candle. So yes, I got two trades that lost me money. Boom. But look what happened. I got one, two, three, four trades that I would otherwise have entered that didn't lose me money. Now, the point you say is, oh, but what happens if you don't quite get it? Well, let's go, let's, let's dill in a, drive into this little bit here, which basically says my trigger remains active. So let me call that pen again. <clears throat> there was my trigger candle. I'm looking for a close above it. On that day, we don't close above the trigger, but you note down here, we don't close below the 15 either. My trigger is still active. What I'm looking for is a close above that level there. Let me draw it better. I'm looking for a close above that level. So we get the trigger, but that candle doesn't confirm. That one is green, but doesn't close above my, my level, which is the trigger level, so I still don't get in. Then we get red, and then we go down, and this candle we close below the 15, and finally the trigger is no longer active. But what that meant, that this trigger is therefore, there's my trigger. I'm active for one, two, three only on the fourth day did it finally fail on me. So what that does, and if we go back to that trade there, it is this one right here. It's that trade there. So it was active for a bunch of days. The point with this two-step entry system is what does it do? Instead of doing six trades and having all sixes losers, that's what would have happened, I did two trades because four of them didn't confirm. So what have I done? Well, I mean, if we draw the numbers, I mean, the, the, the loss is here. Let's say I get in at that point there. I've got a loss down to there. Then I've got a loss down to there. <clears throat> uh, that loss I took down to there. Um, I've got a, that loss I took down to there. That loss would have gone down to there. Uh, and that loss would have gone down to there. So instead of having six nasty losses, I had two nasty losses significantly reducing the, 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 the risk in the process, if that makes sense. So two-step entry process. And then the third one, which is when to action stop loss. And this is, I, I've given this one so much thought and I've crunched so many numbers on it because the others are, the, the first two make perfect sense. They're not bringing risk. They're actually markedly removing risk, cost, and losing trades from the equation. So they are absolute no-brainers. This third one actually brings risk into the equation. And then you've got to say, well, hang on a second while we're upping risk. Now, hear me through, and then I'll show you some pictures for it. The question is, do you action a stop loss when it touches? In other words, your stop loss is X, market comes to X, you exit immediately your stop loss is hit. And you then run the risk of it, then hits the stop loss, and an hour later it rallies again. And now the trend is continuing, but you are out of the trend. And let's go back to this chart here. Um, and I, I, there's an example there. At this point here, we touched my stop loss, but we didn't close through it. Now, at the end of the day, I would have got stopped there, and instead, I, and again, there we touched it, and I actually ended up getting stopped there. So it certainly saved me some money. So it's that point. Here again, what happened? We touched my stop loss during the course of the day, but we didn't close. So I'm only actioning my stop loss in a close. So instead of stopping there, I stopped there. Is that a lot of points? No, but it's adding up a bit. Uh, and what I don't have here, well, there's an ex no, what I don't have here is an example of where it doesn't work. Because trust me, sometimes it doesn't work. Let's see if on this chart we have an example of where it doesn't work. Uh, no, we don't. Of course, sometimes it's not going to work. But th those were some that... It, that it, so, so what it does is, if you're doing it on the touch, you get out of your trade. Now remember, you've used a single line, the 15 EMA in my case, for entry and exit. But what's critically important, I'm working on close. My entry is on close. My exit, i.e. stop, is also on close. The one exception where I do in a touch is when I, I put uh, uh, contracts on to take profit at 1,500 points for a third of the contracts and 3,000 points for another third. 
so that there is an exception. But otherwise, I'm entering and exiting on close. Otherwise, that first slide, this one here, suddenly is no longer applicable if you're just doing it on touch. You've got to do it on close. So the close below, I like the, 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 the point. It, it brings the risk. I'm going to show you some pictures to it. Let's get to some pictures. Let's say, let's, let's bring a pen up. Let's change my pen color to something we can see. Let's say that is my stop loss. Let's say that is 9 o'clock and that is 5 o'clock. Let's say the market opens at this point here. You are in stop loss. What happens if you action stop loss and the market does that during the course of the day? You're now out of this trade. You also, because this line going across, this, this, this horizontal line is entry and exit, you're out of the trade. It carries on running. You're not going to get another signal until we come back. What could also happen is it does that for the day. And then you stop out at the end of the day. Your risk is it does that. And instead of stopping for that amount of points, you stop for that amount of points. And that difference there can be big. It can be absolutely huge big. So that is your risk. Now, my sense is two things. Firstly, I think it swings in roundabouts. I think sometimes it opens and goes higher, sometimes it opens and goes sideways, sometimes it opens and goes down. So I think you're probably going to even out, and that sometimes you're going to take a slightly higher miss. How do I manage this process? I do 1% rule rather than 2% rule. Go and, and check on just one lap. You'll find some uh, on, 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 on uh, risk management. Go Google uh, on 2%. Ah, try that again. On just one lap, go and search for the 2% rule, and you'll find information. I actually run a 1% rule. So I've actually got a stop loss, which by my risk parameters is twice the size. So I've got a lot of wiggle room space there. And what it means is that, again, back to the first point, I'm only out of the trade when the trend is over. By my definition of a trend, and I stress my definition of a trend, and we can argue, you know, is my definition of a trend any good? Well, yeah, I mean, there's a debate there. Make no mistake about that whatsoever. But that's certainly the methodology that I'm using. The other issue with touch is the managing of it. Now, if you're trading Aussie futures, that's typically not an issue. They're humongously liquid. You don't have to monitor them. You can set it with your broker and you can fire and forget in a sense. But sometimes, depending what you're trading, that fire and forgetting, that setting up a hard stop loss within your broker system is not applicable or not really viable either. So quick recap. We're basing, we're talking trend trading. The examples I have used here have been in my lazy system. The three processes, single trigger for entry and exit, a two-step entry process, and when to action a stop-loss trigger. And I say action on close below, not touch below. And if you're on a, a question coming through from on an hourly chart, well, then you would do exactly the, the candles I've been showing you have been daily. But I never specified what those candles were. They could have been five minutes, 15, 60, four hour, daily, weekly, monthly. Principles the same regardless of the time frame. So that's not important at all. So ladies and gents, any questions, pop them into the Q&A box. Michelle's asking, and Michelle, absolutely, uh, what happens on a crash? Well, the point again, frankly, Michelle, is on a crash. I mean, whether I'm touching or not, a crash is going to hurt the behectness out of me. You know, if that's my stop loss, and, and uh, let me try and draw a straight line. If that's my stop loss, and say we closed here, and we gap down and we open there. I mean, are we likely to do that? Sure, maybe. So in fact, I'm going to increase it. The point is, my worry is not that little bit there. My worry is that big bit there. And that comes back to, I only, only uh, uh, some 6% of my entire portfolio in the market is, in my, is, is, is do I use for trading. The rest, I, I, I simply don't. I, I don't like that risk. Do I, a question coming through, do I never use indicators and oscillators? I do not. I use moving averages only, and I use EMAs, exponential, um, or I use price, such as my momentum and my gap trading, which is price only. Uh, I do not use any indicators or oscillators. I don't trade chart patterns or trend lines. I have traded those systems, particularly trend lines for breakouts, chart patterns uh, for, for, I did a, the engulfing candle system. Um, in fact, I must go do a webcast on the engulfing candle. The engulfing candle wasn't, the problem with trend lines and, and even chart patterns, head and shoulders and stuff, is that it becomes subjective. So 
uh, sorry, let me do that. Let's say you've got a neckline and you've got a stock that's come up, given you a shoulder, given you a head, given you a shoulder. The point is exactly where you draw that neck, neck neckline is so subjective. Let's say you've got a a, a, a stock that's been, uh, no, I don't want that. You've got a, 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 a triangle of sorts and hey folks, I'm not the expert in these patterns at all you know and then it breaks and at that point you buy but could you have not drawn your line there so you should have bought there or maybe you should have bought it drawn it there and in fact that was your resistance see what i'm saying there's too many ways i mean if i just do and i say to everyone in there go draw me some trend lines well there's an obvious one down there although we could perhaps put one across there on the top are we doing that or are we ignoring it and doing that what about that one there what about those there, you see what I'm saying? Just too many options, i.e. subjective. I'm an out-and-out -out mechanical system. I don't want to have to look at a chart and draw a line and then zoom in and say, is it or isn't it? I want it to be black or white by the data, nice and simple. Uh, Malcolm, what MA am I using? So uh, if you're talking the difference between uh, between uh, slow weighted and exponential, I always use exponential EMAs. Um, if you're talking what were their values in my lazy system, I use 15, 30, and 60. Um, I use 30 and 60 for direction. In other words, if it is uh, 30 above 60, I only take longs. 30 below 60, I only take shorts. We're currently in the top 40, 30 below 60. So shorts only, and then 15 EMA is my trigger. Uh, and that's my lazy system. If you go to uh, justonelap.com, check for lazy, you'll find it there. Uh, question coming through. I've been using this stochastic for my intraday trading, but it seems to be going all wrong uh, on a 30-minute chart. Uh, yeah, look, I mean, a couple of things. As I said, I'm, I'm not a fan of stochastic. Um, actually, it's not true. I, I am a huge fan of stochastic. It's my favorite. I love it, but I don't use it. I used to use it, and by that, I'm going back to 2000 and 2001, 2002. I used to use stochastic, and it it it, it didn't make me money. I mean, it, yeah, frankly, I probably made money more from luck and 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 the like than anything else. So I, I wasn't interested in, in in stochastic at all. That's why I've moved away from it. Um, but go and have a look at go go and go and check some of the videos and just one lab from Warren Peacock. He's got a couple of trading systems, both for uh, Aussie as well as for. Um, uh, uh, CFDs and and he's not using he's using a, a variety of different techniques go and have a look at his systems they tried they tested if you've got questions you can bang me or Warren a question uh, Andre do you only use the strat on all trading you do ah great question Andre um no so I trade broadly two systems one is momentum uh, I, I broadly trade three. One is actually the gap trading, um, and that that's a completely game. And I don't tr I don't use it on the gap system. And again, you'll find the video at just one lap. Um, then I trade momentum, and I don't use it on, on the momentum. Although momentum is in a sense a, a, a trend based system, and that it's looking to catch the trends. It, it's slightly more nuanced. It's momentum, which perhaps is just a fancy way of saying trend. Um, but then I, on my lazy, and I trade two sets of lazy, uh, I trade end of week on the indices where I buy the ETF products, and then I trade daily on the top 40 where I then trade the Aussie. And yes, I use this across both of those systems, and I'm looking to expand that system into international markets as well. Martinez, do you only trade your lazy system on the daily for or for intraday as well? Martinez, I only trade it on daily and then on weekly. Um, and I don't trade intraday, quite simply. I don't trade intraday because I'm I'm, I'm lazy. <laughs> well, you know, I don't trade it intraday because part of a trend-based system is you need to catch every move, which means I need to be stuck to a computer. Now, I could do a one-hour candle and that's less bad and the like, but, you know, I, I've got the freedom to to take afternoon naps and do webcasts and go to meetings and, and, and you know, read my book. If I'm in Durban, go for a surf, whatever the case may be, because I do end-of-day trading or end-of-week trading rather than intraday. So that's a decision, a personal one, one needs to make. To me, I don't want to be a slave to my computer screen. Trading for me must give me freedom from ties that bind. In other words, the freedom that I can do what I'm interested in doing. Trading is a means to an end. You know, if I were to draw you a list of the 10 things I'm passionate about, to be honest, trading is not one of them. Trading is a way I generate money. 
Yeah, I'm passionate about wine, about books, about surfing, uh, about teaching, uh, that sort of thing. That, that, that's what I'm passionate about. Uh, trading's not there. So in truth, I want to limit my screen time for trading. It's a personal point. If you know, if 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 you're, and I spent uh, two years almost day trading, stayed in front of my screens. As I said, it's personal. Everyone needs to make their own decision in that point. Question coming through. Ah, Michelle. Okay, I've got you, Michelle. Um, sorry, I, I, I read it wrong the, the, the first time around. Um, what about using different moving averages? Yes, sure. So I used 15, 30, 60. I've used them for a long time. They work for me. Are they the holy grail of moving averages? No. No, of course not. Um, I like the ratio. You know, 15, then I double to 30, then I double to 60. So if I were to change it, I would use 10, 20, 40, or 50, 100, 200. If you... Reduce the time frame, get more trades, smaller profits, increase the time frame, less trades, uh, bigger profits, bigger losses as well. But, it, it, you know, play around with different levels. Start with 15, uh, 30, 60, tweak and play around. Uh, yes, uh, Shivam, there is a video. If you go to uh, go to justonelap.com, punch in, uh, do a search for lazy, you will find the lazy systems. And I've got a short URL, which is there. If you go to that short URL down at the bottom, that'll take you to my lazy Aussie system and you can grab the video there as well. 